Welcome back to EVE 101. We've already discussed the station menu when looking at the in-game user interface. In this video, we'll be looking at the Neocom menu, found on the left-hand side of the screen. Unlike the station menu, the Neocom is accessible whether a player is docked or undocked. It is one of the main tools the player uses while engaging in EVE Online's gameplay. It provides access to tools and menus that makes a player's life easier. To start, the panel in which the Neocom sits in can be manually adjusted to serve the player's needs by holding and dragging the edge of the panel to the left or to the right. This increases, or decreases, the size. At the very top of the Neocom is the main EVE menu, represented by the E from the EVE Online logo. This menu contains four sub-menus, each with additional menu windows. These are split into the Inventory, Accessories, Business, and Social sub-menus. The Inventory submenu contains access to the following windows. The Inventory window is where a player can see what items and ships they have in their current station, as well as access their corporation hangar when docked. The Cargo Hold is where a player can see what items they have stored in their active ship. The Open Item Hangar window is where a player can see only the items and modules they have in the current station they are in. Open Ship Hangar is a menu where, similarly to the Open Item Hangar, a player can see what ships they have in the station they are currently docked in. The Open Market Deliveries menu is where a player can see what courier packages they have active, assuming they are performing a courier run. We'll talk more about couriers when we talk about contracts later into this video. The Personal Assets window is a listing of all that player character's assets and their locations throughout the game. The Redeem Items menu is where a player can go to redeem items, such as a Plex they bought through CCP's online store. The Accessories submenu contains the following windows. First, there's the Browser Bookmarks. This is the area where URL bookmarks are stored when using the in-game web browser. The Browser, also called the in-game web browser, is a tool in which players can access out-of-game websites and forums while in-game. It is a useful tool in which players can access third-party websites, such as the system mapping website Dotlan or the corporation's own forums, without having to alt-tab out of the game. We'll talk more about game tools in a later episode in this series, though. The calculator and notepad are both very straightforward in terms of how they are used. The log and messages menu show all logs and messages pertaining to the game client. This can include seeing who did damage to whom first, and so forth. It also allows the player the option to customize the placement of damage notifications on their screen. The Business submenu holds various tools that a player can use to partake in the in-game economy of EVE Online. The Regional Market is the same window a player can access through the Station menu, in which a player is able to see what items are sold at what prices in a given region. Contracts pertain to a method in which players can sell items outside of the in-game market. Typically, this is used within a corporation or alliance so that they can always have a steady supply of ships and other assets to sell to its members without outside interference that would be experienced through the in-game market. There were three types of contracts. Auction, Item Exchange, and Courier. Auction contracts are rather straightforward. A player puts these items into a contract and sets up an auction period. The highest bid at the end of the period wins the contract. Item exchanges are direct trades between the players without needing to use a trade window. Courier contracts are a method in which one player hires another player to move items from one system to another. Each of these contracts have different forms of availability, such as public, private, as well as corporation and alliance only. Contracts are a useful tool many player groups utilize regularly. The player wallet is where a player can see their current finances, recent transactions, pending market orders, and more. If a player is also given the proper permissions for their corporation, they can also see these menus for their own corporation. The Industry window is the same window a player will find in the Station Services menu. It is where a player can set up or monitor any active works of manufacturing, research, or invention. Under the Planetary Colonies menu, a player can view and manage any planets they are extracting resources from under the Planetary Interaction form of gameplay. The Agent Finder window is where a player can locate and find any mission agents that player wishes to fulfill requests for. This is oriented towards players aiming to do more player versus environment focused gameplay rather than player versus player. The Factional Warfare window, much like the one found in the Station Services window, displays relevant information regarding faction warfare. This is where a player can see the different systems available for combat, as well as their current states. Much like the Factional Warfare window, the Bounty Offices window is the same as the one that's found in the Station Services menu. 
This is where a player can see what the bounties are on other player characters, claim a bounty, as well as file their own bounty against another player. The social submenu is oriented towards interpersonal communication between player groups. The mail menu is where a player can read or send any in-game mail to other players or whole corporations. The calendar, much like the calculator and notepad, is rather straightforward. The corporation window allows players with the proper permissions to manage their own corporation. Corporation CEOs have access to all this window's functionality by default and can assign specific access to certain players. All corporation members have access to the information bulletins, as well as all publicly available information about the corporation. The Sovereignty window displays the current sovereignty status of any system in New Eden. Pilots can also view a breakdown of recent sovereignty changes. This applies to both faction warfare systems, which can be switched between the two warring militias, and the zero security space systems called NullSec. The Fleet window is a way a player can find and join any fleet that is made available to them. They can also start their own fleet or manage a current fleet they are in. We'll talk more about fleets in a separate section of this series. If a player wishes to livestream their EVE Online gameplay, they can do so through an in-game service that goes directly to Twitch.tv. Most players, however, tend to prefer using third-party services that allow them to use custom overlays to hide their location or any other sensitive information. The Channels menu is where a player can look for and join, or create, any of the many chat channels in EVE Online. By default, a player has access to two channels, their local chat and their corporation chat. The local chat channel is a way to communicate with other players that are in the current system. The corporation chat channel is where a player can talk to fellow corporation members. If the player is part of a corporation that is part of an alliance, they'll be given automatic access to the alliance chat channel, which functions similarly to the corporation chat channel. If the player joins a faction warfare militia, they'll be added to a militia chat channel as well. After these submenus are the general window icons for various useful tools. The character sheet allows the player to manage everything about their character such as skill training, attributes, implants, and jump clones. Among the most notable sections of this menu is the skill queue. This is where a player can set what skills they want their character to train. Under the people and places window, a player can look up any other characters, corporations, alliances, or systems to interact with. A player can also organize their bookmarks in the various systems they've visited. Bookmarks are a very useful tool, and we'll be talking more about them in our next video on the in-game UI. The ship fitting window can be accessed both through the Neocomp and Station Services window. Players can configure their ship setups as well as access and modify ship cargo holds and drone bays. This menu also displays any relevant statistics about the player's ship, such as offensive and defensive hit points, using the current modules attached. A player can also use this menu to save any configurations for later use. The map menu shows the in-game map, as well as various information about every system in the game. The Interbus Identification System, also called ISIS, is a tech tree menu that helps players identify ships in EVE. It displays all available ships in a visual and interactive way, as well as showing which technology line different ships branch from. It also allows a player to see the ships and necessary skills required to pilot the hull. For players to keep track of any missions, the journal is a useful window. From here, a player can track agents, expeditions, contracts, and their epic story arc journal. The Agents tab helps players keep track of the missions they've been offered or accepted by the different mission agents in the game. It also allows a player to list how many loyalty points they have from the various in-game NPC corporations. With the Compare tool, a player can look at and compare various items in the game such as ships, modules, and so forth. This is useful for players to make sure that they are choosing the right item for whatever they plan to partake in. The New Eden Stores EVE Online's Cash Shop. Here, players can purchase items for Aurum, a store-specific currency that a player must spend real money on. Every item in the shop, with a few exceptions, are purely for cosmetic purposes and give the player no special perks. There are also passes to train multiple characters on an account or to re-sculpt a player character's look. Each of these items are also purchasable in-game through the market for the in-game currency called ISK. The tutorial service is a way for new, or even old players, to look up tutorials on any of the menus or other aspects of the game. 
If a player is having issues, they can also use the help menu to either file a support ticket to the Game Masters or look up any relevant information through the EVE Online wiki. A player can customize their Neocon menu in a variety of ways. Dragging and dropping a menu icon onto the left-hand Neocon menu allows players to easily have access to any menus or windows they regularly use. A player can also change the color scheme of all their menus by going under the in-game settings. At the very bottom of the Neocom is the clock. The time displayed is based off the Coordinated Universal Time, also known as UTC. In EVE, it is also referred to as EVE Time, and can be interchangeable with Greenwich Mean Time. Clicking the clock also allows the player to access their calendar. To the bottom right is the Notification menu. This is where any relevant information such as skill trainings being completed, skill queues being empty, or any mails received can be displayed. That is all for this overview of the Neocon menu. It was a lengthy topic, but if you're still lost, don't forget to check out the EVE Online wiki, or ask in the Help chat channel in-game. You can also visit eve101.com for a list of all these menus and their functions, as well as more tutorials. There's also crossingzebras.com for additional EVE Online analysis and insight. In our next video, we'll be covering the user interface while a player is operating their ship.